KC 135 air refueling. You know. I don't suppose there are many things in this world that are indispensable, but this old bird comes about as close to it as you can get for an airplane. It's a KC-135 Stratotanker, and it's used for refueling aircraft in flight. Oh, we also use it in SAC for carrying cargo or passengers, and sometimes as an airborne command post. But when I say indispensable, I'm thinking of it mostly as a refueler. I'm Sergeant Novak. And I'm a boom operator on these KC-135 tankers. I work with a pilot, a co-pilot, and a navigator. We're the whole crew, just the four of us. OK, preparation for contact, check this. Roger, preparation for contact, altimeter setting. Set 2992. Set co-pilot 2992. Stabilizer trip. Check. I'm going back now to refuel an F-4C fighter. Come on, I'll show you how we do it. Good air attack and doesn't apply. Strobe lights doesn't apply radio contact. I was saying a while ago, these tankers are almost indispensable for today's air operation. You take aircraft deployment, for example. You know how we got our fighter aircraft over there in the Korean War? We had to dismantle them, send them over there by ships, and then reassemble them when they got there. It took months. But today, with aerial refueling, we can send fighters any place in the world in a matter of hours, like we did when we sent that squadron of F-106s over in Korea, right after the Pueblo incident. However, with refueling, we give them unlimited range and save precious time. So we are able to send B-52s nonstop and quickly to Guam from the U.S. on a regular basis. Many of the B-52s that go on bombing raids in Vietnam operate out of Guam. It's a long haul from Guam to Vietnam and back, and there's no way to complete the mission without air refueling. The 
B-52 and the 135 are designed to work together. They give us our global capability. They can keep up with us well enough to refuel us at our air speeds and altitudes. They can refuel us at night and in all kinds of weather conditions. People think of tanker duty as being hazardous, and we don't think much about it ourselves. But I know a boomer that was in a tanker crew that got the Distinguished Flying Cross and the McKay Trophy. And you don't get awards like that just for laying on your belly and pumping gas. Everyone knows what the Distinguished Flying Cross is, but the McKay Trophy is given for the single most outstanding feat of airmanship for the year. Hey, since we have multiple refuelings, uh, how about it between elements? I stole the boon and come forward for a cup of coffee, huh? Tanker crews that have been flying together for a while don't do much talking during flight. In fact, if somebody else was looking on, they'd probably think, what's the matter, these guys mad at each other or something? Well, it isn't that, of course. It's just that they've worked together so long that each man seems to know what the other wants, even before he asks for it. Like on one mission, I noticed the navigator was getting a little grouchy. So I gave him a cup of water, and he settled right down. He was thirsty. But he was so busy that he didn't even realize it. That's what I like about tanker duty. You're part of a team. A team the Air Force thinks is indispensable to modern air power. Any way you look at it, I'm glad to be a part of it.